This video is sponsored by Motionary. I recently got myself an iPad Pro, as you can see. I was quite excited about Apple's announcement making Final Cut Pro finally available for the iPad. As you might know, Final Cut Pro is my main editing software, so I was curious to see how the filming and editing experience would be on an iPad and if that would be something I would include in my workflow. And hey, if you're someone who has an iPad or is thinking about getting one and is wondering if this is something you could use for your content creation, then I hope this video can help you out. A big reason why mobile filmmaking has gotten so popular is that it's an all-in-one system making it easy to shoot, edit, and share quality content on the go. So a few weeks ago, I took the iPad with with me on a trip to Berlin with my brother to discover the city and created a short little video that I filmed and edited on the iPad. Parts of it were also filmed on the iPhone and I'm going to share the video with you later in this video. Now for the trip, I wanted to make sure I was equipped enough to film with the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro that I'm using is the sixth generation, which has an M2 chip with a 12.9 inch display. I also got the Magic Keyboard, which is great for editing, but not so great for filming. Now you could use the iPad to film like this. However, if you're someone who creates regular content solely using the iPad, I highly recommend getting a rig because once you drop it, you better be insured. And the rig that I bought is from Axon, which allows me to mount two grips to the side for a more secure hold. And even though the iPad has image stabilization, you will have steadier results using the handles on the side. Now, the clips you're seeing right now are all captured using the rig without post stabilization applied. At the top of the rig, I also mounted a microphone and by using a windscreen, I was able to eliminate wind noise. Now, the iPad Pro does not have a headphone jack, so you will need an adapter for that. By the way, I will leave links to all products mentioned in the video description below. Now, not only does it protect the iPad Pro, but it also looks badass and professional. And depending on your shooting needs, you can custom your rig to your liking. By using this rig, I was able to mount it on a tripod to create this beautiful time-lapse shot of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, which otherwise would have been more difficult to achieve. Another reason why I went for that rig is because I can mount a battery to the back of the rig, which allows me to charge the iPad on the go. Especially when filming and editing for longer hours, this can be very helpful. Now, the rig isn't perfect. It does have some flaws, such as not being able to use the buttons on the iPad iPad. I also wish I could just slide in the iPad instead of having to unscrew everything, which would make switching from the rig to the Magic Keyboard way easier. But all in all, I think it's a great setup and enhances the filmmaking experience. Now, I do recommend you also check out the, the small rig iPad holder, which like the rig from Axon includes a dual hand grip. You won't have the same protection as a rig, but you will have a much quicker setup time. I like the default camera app on the iPhone File Cup Pro on the iPad gives you access to the Pro Camera Mode feature, allowing you to manually control your white balance, exposure, and focus for better video results. The settings I used when I was in Berlin are the following. I set the resolution to 4K for the best quality and the frame rate to 60 frames per second, which allowed me to slow down the footage. I then set and locked the white balance to 5600 Kelvin as it was shooting during the day. And by having your white balance locked, you can avoid the color shifts in your video. Video. After that, I set and locked focus and exposure by tap holding on the screen. Now, because it also locks the focus, I can use the manual focus whenever I want to change the focus in my image. I also have grids enabled to set my composition better. And if you have a hard time setting your exposure, you also have the option to enable zebras, which will show you which parts of your image are over and underexposed. If you plan on capturing audio, you can also enable the audio levels to monitor any audio peaks. Now, here's the great part. When you record something inside of the Final Cut Pro app for the iPad, it will save your videos directly into your project. This way, you can easily check your shot without having to go through the extra step of importing them. The Pro Camera Mode is still limited compared to Filmic Pro. However, for the average user who wants to create simple content, Final Cut Pro's Pro Camera Mode certainly gives you all the basic functions you need. Editing on the iPad is a lot of fun. The interface is built to be intuitive and easy to use. Even though I have a lot of experience editing on the desktop version of Final Cut Pro, it did take me some time to get used to the multi-touch interface and some of the new editing features. Now, one of my favorite features that Apple included is the jog wheel, which allows you to scrub, trim, and nudge clips. So 
instead of using your fingers to trim and move the clips, you can use the jog wheel to create precise edits, which I think Apple has done a really good job at implementing it. I can also pinch zoom and drag and drop effects to clips, which works seamlessly. I also got myself the Apple keyboard as I can use these shortcuts to speed up the editing. Also, the Apple Pencil makes skimming through clips fast and easy as I can hover over the clip. Final Cut Pro on the iPad also includes a live drawing feature that allows me to draw directly onto the footage to create my tiles, for example. In this shot, I place the tile behind me using the scene removal effect, which I think looks cool. There are so many ways you can use the live draw feature to spice up your content. It all comes down to how creative you can be. You can also add keyframes to smoothly create a zoom in effect like I did on this time-lapse shot. You can also add music from their library. They have around 45 songs, which automatically adjusts the length of your video. Now, the assets provided by Final Cut Pro on the iPad are great. However, it is very limited since there are not many songs available, not even sound effects, a few text generators and background, which can result in your video looking the same as everyone else will probably use the same assets. So it's a good idea to consider expanding your library using Motion Array's huge collection of quality assets all in one place. What's great is that you can easily find and download every asset you need, such as royalty free music, sound effects, motion graphics, stock footage, and more to bring your content to the next level. As an example for the bike scene, I went over to Motion Array's sound effects library, typed in bicycle and downloaded the bicycle bell sound effect. From then on, I tap hold on the file to then import it into Final Cut Pro. I then drag the sound effect below the video and edit it. You can also download motion graphics and add them as an overlay to your footage. For example, I downloaded the scribble element, which includes a variety of hand draws and then imported it into Final Cut Pro and place it as an overlay on top of the footage to create this cool animated drawing effect. Super simple and this can also be a great combination with the live drawing feature. Now, Motionary's plugins are supported for Final Cut Pro's desktop version. However, for the iPad version, we will have to wait as third-party content will be coming soon. Now, Motionary has many more creative assets that you can explore. It's membership based with unlimited downloads and you don't have to worry about copyright issues as they cover it all. You can sign up for their yearly plan or use the monthly plan, which is great, and cancel anytime if you decide to. I highly recommend you give it a try. And if you're interested, Motionary is actually holding a creator's challenge through June in which they will draw six winners every week for a month with amazing prizes. So be sure to check out the link in the video description below to find out more. With that said, let's move on and let me show you how the final video looks like that I've edited on the iPad of Berlin. Welcome to Berlin. So I hope you like that little edit. Now, for those that want to get Final Cut Pro for the iPad, they offer a month free trial. This way you can test it out for yourself and see if that is something you'd like to integrate into your workflow. After that, you can either sign up for a monthly subscription, which is $499 or a year subscription for $49. If you're someone who solely uses the iPad to film and edit, then $49 a year is well worth the cost as you get access to many great tools and features that can help you create quality content 
all in one place. Creating content on the iPad has overall been a great but also challenging experience. Due to the large size of the iPad, I haven't found it ideal to film with it on the go and also attracts a lot of attention. With the iPhone, it is much easier as I can whip it out of my pocket and start filming right away. Whereas with the iPad, I had to take it out of my bag or walk around with it while holding. However, when it comes to shooting on the iPhone and editing the video on the iPad, I think it's a great combo. If you do travel type content, you can use your iPhone, which typically has the better camera for vlogging and use the iPad as an editing station due to the bigger screen while still being mobile. With AirDrop, it works seamlessly and you can easily move the footage onto the iPad and import it into Final Cut Pro. Now for creating content at home where you film yourself and capture a few B-rolls, the iPad works great as you have the time to set everything up. But apart from filming and editing, the iPad can also be used in many different ways. You can use it as a second monitor for editing like I do, or if you're working with a large crew, you can have the director use the iPad as a second monitor to view the footage you are shooting. I also like to use the iPad to create a shot list and bring it along to my shoots to keep track of my shots. Now, I think the iPad is a great tool for creators to use, and it will only get better as Apple continues to develop Final Cut Pro and add more features. Now, I'm curious to know how you would use the iPad in your daily content creation. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you guys are interested and want to learn more on how to produce quality content with your mobile phone, make sure to check out smartphonefilmmaking.com where you can get access to my full course, including future content. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you the next time, guys.